Hey everybody, welcome to Jason Drives. This week I'm driving the amazing Sinclair C5. This is a 1985 Sinclair C5. It's not really a car and it's not really a scooter or a motorcycle or even a moped. It's just it's just kind of a vehicle. And that's actually the preferred term for it, according to Clive Sinclair, a British guy who was sort of like Britain's lower rent Elon Musk or Steve Jobs. He brought home computing to the British people with his computers, most notably the Sinclair Spectrum, a fantastic little computer with rubber keys that almost every British person growing up in the 80s seemed to have. Clive wanted to make electric cars. You could argue he sort of got to with this. The idea was he wanted a cheap, easy electric car that people could use for going to and from work and just driving, you know, like a normal city car. And this is what he ended up with. It's a fascinating vehicle. The, the chassis was actually designed by Lotus. So if you look underneath here, it's got like a Y-shaped aluminum chassis that Lotus, of the Lotus design. The motor is a little electric motor making all of 0.34 horsepower. It's sort of like a recumbent bike, but you'll notice where you would normally expect to have handlebars, there's nothing, there's a void. And your handlebars are here under your thighs, which makes this, strangely, the only vehicle I've ever been in that has genital padding on the handlebars. There's also pedals on the Sinclair, so if that 0.34 horsepower is enough for you, you can use the point whatever human bodies make and give yourself a little extra kick. Then, of course, there's the safety factor. These flags were added later because, as you can guess, when you're driving on the road among other cars, nobody can see you. And there's a severe danger of, if not getting just crushed by a car, then ruining your pants pretty much constantly. But, despite all that, it's weirdly fun. So let's take it out and see what it does. So the way you drive it, your thumb's got a little of the throttle and it makes you go. And because it only weighs 99 pounds, it actually goes quicker than you think or maybe it just feels quicker because you're basically riding in half a plastic bathtub two inches from the ground. So it may be actually pretty slow. In fact, I know it is pretty damn slow. The steering under your thighs is Weird. Like you want your hands to be up here, but you have your hands under your thighs and you think if there's an emergency, you're not really sure how much you can crank the wheel, but then when you do crank it, you realize you're probably going to tip over. So it's, it's tricky. I also should mention this thing is widely regarded as not just one of the biggest automotive failures, but one of the biggest technological failures in British motoring history. They made somewhere between 15 and 17,000 of these things, and they sold 5,000, which is amazing for a couple reasons. One, they sold 5,000 of these things, and it's also amazing because that means there's about 12,000 of these just around that were never sold, and who the hell knows where they are? They're in fields and whales and sheep drive them now. Yeah, but it is kind of fun. And over road bumps and bad road surfaces, <laughs> there's not a lot of suspension here. So you're gonna feel everything. It's a vehicle in the sense that like, you know, an elevator is technically a vehicle too. I'm gonna really open it up now. All right, ready? Here we go, full throttle, full legs. Yeah! There's no question the Sinclair C5 is a miserable failure. Absolutely no question. It's about as desirable for the use it was intended as, as like a ghost pepper pacifier. Nobody really wants this thing. At the same time though, as far as abject miserable failures go, it's actually pretty fun. It's kind of charming in its geeky 80s era way, and it's about as close as you're gonna get to say, you know, driving an Atari. So in that sense, I don't hate the Sinclair C5, no matter what a huge colossal failure it was. It's actually, you know, a pretty good time. Full gas, not going anywhere. There we go.